Good evening, Peter Gerritz, I'm a psychiatrist. What is sleep? The mind seems mysterious and so does sleep. We can measure certain aspects of sleep with, for instance, an EEG machine measuring brain waves, and we can differentiate non-REM, so non-rapid eye movement sleep from rapid eye movement sleep. So there can be things to measure with sleep, but there are also non-measurable aspects, like for instance, can we measure the content of dreams? So we don't necessarily get to the essence of sleep with measurements. And what made me think about this is sleep-related hallucinations. So a patient told me that she was seeing things, seeing people in her house, and that was very troublesome for her. And she even on one occasion called the police. And when I talked with her more about it, it sounded like these episodes of seeing and hearing people were related to either waking up or going to sleep. So the transitions between wakefulness and sleep, either going to sleep or waking up. And that is something that is known. <clears throat> and we call these hallucinations in the transition, for instance, from wakefulness to sleep, hypnagogic hallucinations, and at the other end, hypnopompic hallucinations in the transition from sleep to waking up to wakefulness. And what it seems to be is an intrusion of dreaming into wakefulness. So a transition state, fascinating. Another patient, this is years ago in a psychiatric hospital, she'd actually been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, was receiving antipsychotic medication. But when I talked with her more in detail, it also sounded like her auditory hallucinations, and I don't know if she had visual hallucinations also, but the voices she was hearing sounded like they were correlated with either waking up or going to sleep. So I actually discontinued her antipsychotic medication. And from what I remember, she did fine. So we do have to be careful as psychiatrists or as doctors in general with diagnoses. We can really get blindsided sometimes and people can get misdiagnosed. And then, for example, this lady could have potentially been on antipsychotic medication for years without needing it necessarily. So we want to be careful. Does our soul leave our body when we dream or when we sleep? Some people believe so. There's a lot of writing about the spiritual aspects of sleep. So that's another fascinating aspect. And dreaming, dreams, what are dreams? Am I dreaming now? Can I prove that I'm dreaming now or can I disprove it? I don't think so. So this could potentially be a dream right now. Interesting. So another interesting aspect of sleeping is people have made major scientific discoveries based on dreams. For example, reportedly Einstein's theory of rel relativity is connected with a dream he had, I think when he was quite young, and the dream was, the dream featured cows. I'm not sure of the exact details of the dream. Frederick Banting, from a dream, got the idea of using insulin for diabetes, another fascinating thing. Niels Bohr, the physicist, got the idea of the structure of an atom from a dream. I think he may have been dreaming about planets circling each other, and he got the idea of the structure of an atom from that. And I think that structure now, quote structure of an atom is now outdated but still, interesting idea at the time. August Kekulé thought of the idea of a benzene ring in a dream. 
indirectly. He was dreaming apparently of snakes, I think biting their tails. So something circular, and that's how he came upon the idea of a benzene ring. Dmitry Mendeleev had the idea of periodic of the periodic table in a dream. Dreams can also apparently have premonitions in them. So people can apparently get messages about the future in dreams. So that is also a fascinating aspect and that ties into something physicists have also paid attention to, which is, is time travel possible? And Kurt Gödel apparently felt that based on Einstein's theory of relativity, under certain circumstances, I think in a rotating universe, time travel would be possible. So a lot of fascinating aspects, in my opinion, to sleeping and dreaming. And many people feel or have felt over the years that the transitions between being awake and sleeping and at the other end between sleeping and waking are times when we as human beings are highly suggestible, kind of a natural hypnotic state. And people that have tried to use these transitions either into sleep or out of sleep, people have tried to use those times to suggest things to themselves and to try to get those suggestions to get into their subconscious. Like, for instance, certain goals they want to attain, they try to, so to speak, feed to their subconscious or unconscious mind during those transitions between wakefulness and sleep and at the other end, sleep and wakefulness. Thank you.